this is the perfect cube or cube root homework. We start off the same way we did with square roots, only this time you're having a cube root. Now you know you have a cube root here because your index value here is given, it's three. If it wasn't given, by default, it's two. So these are cube roots. They work the same way as your square roots. Let's take a look at our perfect cube worksheet. As described in class, you're responsible for knowing essentially these lists. So if we look at this here, I got to know what my perfect cubes are. Anything to the third power is a perfect cube. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, and so on are all perfect cubes. So we notice here that the value 8 is a perfect cube. We need the base. 2 to the third power. So the base that was raised to the third power here to get 8 is the value 2. We are done. The cube root of 8 is 2. Number 5. The cube root of 1. If I go back to my list, I notice 1 here is a perfect cube right here and the base that was cubed we can see is the value 1 so that the cube root of 1 actually turns out to be the value 1 number 7 the cube root of 1,000. Going back to my list of perfect cubes. 1,000 is a perfect cube. The base that was used to get 1,000, or was raised to the third power, was 10. So that the cube root here of a thousand is ten. Well, let's note ten as a base to the third power is one thousand. Number nine, the cube root of negative twenty seven. Now Let's remember here that this here is a cube root. So that I'm going to need a base raised to, I'll put it in orange here. I'm going to need some base, call it B, raised to the third power that's going to equal 27. Now let's note, this is different than square roots. We can have bases that are negative and raised to the third power to get a value that's negative. Meaning, if I use a base value of negative 2 and I raise it to my third power, this is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Sorry, wrong number. Not negative 2, negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 times negative 3, which is a negative 27. The point being is we have the cube root of a negative 27 turns out to be negative 3 because it's the base. We can take the cube roots of negatives they're going to be negatives, but we can never take the square root of negatives 
and have it be a real number. Number nine. Number 11, the cube root of a negative 125. Notice again, it's a cube root. And yes, it's a negative value. This is a perfect cube. We have to find the base. So what this means is, I have some base that's raised to the third power that's going to give me a negative 125. The question now is, what's the base? Well, we know if we multiply negative 5 here to the third power, we're going to get a value of a negative 125, meaning negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 we get positive 25 times negative 5 we get simply negative 125 so that our base value here is going to be negative 5 number 13 the cube root of I should say the negative cube root of negative 27. Now, let's remember what this negative sign really is. That's negative 1 times the cube root of a negative 27. Now, we already have that negative 1. It's out here. The cube root of negative 27 we found was negative 3. So that a negative times a negative will simply be a positive. You are done. Fifteen minus cube root of negative one. This is negative one times cube root of negative one. And we already seen from a prior problem that the cube root of negative 1 is also negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Number 17. The cube root of x to the third power. Now notice x to the third power is a perfect cube. And we know that the answer here is going to equal x, because that's simply our base. The base x raised to this third power is the perfect cube x cubed. This is the relationship. Now let's note. It is true that my index value here for the base my index value here is 3. So what I can do here is divide by the index of what? Of that 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, or we simply say x to the 1 is x. Same answer. We're done. Number 19. The cube root of b to the 6 is b to the 6 divided by the, once again, index. Six divided by three is the value two. We're done. <coughs> Cube root of 8x cubed. We're going to use again the product rule for cube roots, meaning I have a perfect cube here in 8, 
perfect cube here in x to the third. And once again, notice we are multiplying both terms under the radical. So the cube root of a product is product of cube roots. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x to the third is x. The final answer is 2x. Twenty-three. Cube root of twenty-seven x to the six. The cube root of a product. Twenty-seven is a perfect cube. X to the six is a perfect cube. Cube root of this product is product of cube roots. The cube root of twenty-seven we know is three. The cube root of x to the 6 is x to the 6 divided by, once again, my index. The index here is 3. So I get 3x squared. And I'm done. 25. <coughs> Cube root of 64 times x to the 12. That's by the product rule, the cube root of 64 times the cube root of x to the 12. Now I know 64 is a perfect cube. x to the 12th is a perfect cube. The cube root of 64 is 4 x to the 12th divided by 3. Notice again, index, index. Use properties of exponents, and you get 4x to the 4th. And you're done. Number 27. The cube root of 8, a to the 3rd, Let's say that again. The cube root of 64, sorry, the cube root of 8, a to the third, b to the sixth. Notice, perfect cube, perfect cube, perfect cube. By the product rule, cube root of 8, cube root of a to the third, cube root of y to the twelfth. The cube root of 8 is 2. This is a to the 3 divided by 3. I'm sorry. We looks like we have a typo. Let's try this again. Let's try number 27 all over again. Okay. 27 cube root of 8. a to the 3rd v to the 6. Eight, a to the third, b to the sixth are all perfect cubes. This is going to be cube root of eight times the cube root of a to the third times the cube root of b to the sixth by the product rule. Cube root of a product is product of cube roots. Now, the cube root of eight is two. This is a to the three divided by three and b to the 6 divided by 3. So let's go back and emphasize. Cube root, cube root, divide by that index of 3. We get 2, a to the first, b to the second, or 2a, b squared. You're done. Number 29 is cube root. 64, x cubed, y to the 12th. By the product rule, we get the cube root of 64 times the cube root of x cubed, 
times the cube root of y to the 12th. The cube root of 64 is 8 times x to the 3 divided by 3 times y to the 12 divided by 3. So let's take a look again. Index is 3, divide by the index. Index is 3, divide by the index. 8, x to the 1, y to the 4th. x to the 1st power is just x. We get 8, x, y to the 4th for number 29. 31 is the cube root of 1 8 cube root of 1 divided by the cube root of 8 by the quotient rule. The cube root of 1 is 1 and the cube root of 8 is 2. And we're done. Thirty-three cube root of x to the third over 27. By the quotient rule, we get the cube root of x to the third over the cube root of 27. Don't forget that the cube root of x to the third is x, and the cube root of 27 is 3. And we're done. 35 cube root let's be careful here here we go we have the cube root of x to the third times y to the 6 divided by 125. This is all under my radical. So if I use properties of radicals, first the quotient rule, cube root, x to the third, y to the 6th power, divided by cube root of 125. Now, the product rule, cube root, x to the third, cube root, y to the sixth, divided by the cube root of 125. The cube root of x to the third is x. Cube root of y to the sixth is y to the sixth divided by three. And the cube root of 125 we know is five. Now six divided by three we know is two. So this value here is two. Final answer, we're gonna have simply x over, or I should say x times y squared, both over five, and you're done.